Hey, what's up, good people? How are you guys doing? I know we are on a Monday, right? And it's ever good to be on a Monday. These people who say, happy Monday, happy breakfast on a happy Monday. Come on, shut up. I want to be on the weekend, enjoying my free time with my family and friends. But what can we do, right? So this is Spanish Grandmaster Pepe Guenca and I welcome you to the game of the day of round number five of the Grand Chess Tour of Croatia. And in my opinion, the most interesting game yesterday happened between Mamediarov, the super GM from Azerbaijan, and Levon Aronian, the super player from Armenia. So why don't we cut the bullshit and start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares? So Mamediarov went for d4, knight f6 by Levon Aronian, c4 and e6. Of course, uh, Levon Aronian uh, probably is intending to go for the Nimzo India after knight c3, and this is actually what happened in the game. You cannot avoid the Nimzo by playing knight e3 or g3, intending to go for the Catalan, but in the game Mamediarov goes for knight c3. Bishop b4, and we are in the Nimzo India. Here, there are diff different alternatives for the white player. You can play e3, intend to go knight g2, e2, and then kick this bishop from b4 by playing a3. You can uh, try to play queen c2, as Jan Gustafsson recommends in his uh, amazing video series uh, on chess 24. You can play f3, this is an extremely sharp line. And uh, as happened in the game, knight f3, of course, this is one of the most natural moves in the position, just developing a minor piece. And here, of course, there are different alternatives, but Levon Aronian plays d5, transposing uh, to, to uh, what we know, or, or, or what we call the Ragosin defense, right? Uh, a very solid defense as well, and here, again, many, many possibilities for white player. You can play bishop g5, you can play c takes d5, e3, queen b3, or as happened in the game, queen a4 check. Forcing black to go knight c6, since uh, this bishop on b4 is hanging, and... You could say that this queen on a4 is not very well placed, and this is actually true in this uh, type of positions, but also the knight on c6 is not in his best uh, square, right? Normally, in these positions, black want to, uh, wants to reinforce the center by playing c6, and this knight uh, would be better placed on d7. So that's why uh, one for another, right? So after knight c6, there are two main moves here. One is a3, e3. Intending to go bishop d2 later, rook d1 and queen c2, and the other one is bishop g5, and this is what Mamediaro played in the game. Again, two options, or two main options here in this position, one is a6, and the other one is d c4, and this is what Leveranonian played. And here, in the game, Mamediaro went for a3, forcing black to take on c3, but also e3 is really interesting, you're actually intending to recapture the pawn on c4. If black does nothing, uh, white would be better, because you will have a really nice center. But after e3, black plays bishop d7, and it turns out it's not that easy to recapture the c4 pawn, right? Because if you take Carlitos now, what would you play here with the black pieces? If you don't see, you can pause the video and then try to figure out what do you play here with the black pieces. So the move is knight takes d4, boom, since... Uh, queen takes before doesn't work because of knight c2, you know, triple fork, and then this queen is going to be extremely tasty, and black's going to take it, and black's going to win the game. So that's why after e3, bishop d7, it's not that easy to take that pawn, of course there are other moves. But after d takes e4, white played a3, forcing black to take on c3. Why uh, black is forced to take on, on c3? Because if you go back to d6, you can just take this guy on c4, and now white's better, because you have a really nice center, you intend to go, to go e4, and position is really, really good. Still playable, but all right, a3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and again, white has the bishop pair, so you should do something with the black pieces, because if you uh, lose this pawn on c4, again, white would be much, much better in this position, so basically, there's only one good move here, and this is queen d5, now protecting c4, and it's not that easy to get this pawn back. Now, if you play something like e3, didn't happen in the game, then black will play b5, now attacking the queen, reinforcing Carlitos, we got Carlitos twins in this position and then after queen c2, knight e4, this, this knight is not pinned anymore and then black is much better. So that's why after queen d5, Mamedyarov takes on f6, g takes f6 and g3, the main move according to my database. So uh, now given the fact that b5 is possible and then it's not, it's not gonna be that easy to, to, to get this pawn back or even moves like bishop d7 and knight a5 so uh, white is trying to develop his uh, king side with g3 bishop g2 and short castle 
and then he's gonna try to play in the center with some move like e4 and try to create some counter play of course there's a lot of compensation in this position for the sacrifice pawn look at the structure of the black player for example you have uh, double pawns on the c file you got facundo facundo and carlito twins this is actually amazing all right so bishop d7 was played by lemon aronian and now black's threatening to take on d4 so you should remove the queen from a4 and this is what mame Diarov did by playing queen c2 putting a nine on the e4 square so basically in the next move you want to go e4 probably knight a5 was played by lemon aronian so uh, you cannot even dream of getting back uh, soon this pawn on c4 and also there are some bishop a4 ideas in the future or even bishop b5 which are going to be very very interesting so Mame Diarov goes for e4 in this position queen d6 by Lemon Aronian and uh, Bishop g2 was played. And here the Armenian player went for Knight b3 attacking this rook on a1 and here at this point is where Mami Diarov uh, uh, plays a move that is not really accurate. So here you have three options right you got rook a2 which looks like a little bit passive you got rook b1 and rook d1 probably the best move was rook to b1 and Mami Diarov went for rook d1 we're gonna try to explain uh, why. If you go uh, rook d1 and then queen takes a3, let's say, uh, as happened in the game, if you play knight d2, this can be made by, for example, queen a6, protecting c4, and you cannot even take on b3. And the reason if after knight takes b3, c takes b3, queen takes b3, there is this move, bishop a4, and given the fact that the rook is on d1, white is in trouble. If the rook is on b1 in this position, let's say, after knight b3, rook b1, Queen takes a3, you can play knight d2. And if you go for queen a6, now you can take on c4. And this position, even though black's a bit better, because you have a, a, an extra pawn, like white has a lot of uh, a lot of compensation. I know it's sad to go for these kind of positions, like uh, like exchanging queens and a pawn down, but still, there is some compensation and probably is uh, around equal. But all right, in the game, uh, he went for rook d1 and uh, Aronian doesn't think twice. And then he says, you know what, this pawn on a on a day file, I want to take it. So queen takes a3 and short castle by Mame Diarov. And Levon Aronian goes for long castle. And actually, this king is even safer on the queen side than on the king side. See, if you go short castle, there could be some e5 ideas later. And then uh, you could try to create some attack against the black king here on the king side. And then uh, there will be a lot of lot of compensation. But after long castle, it's gonna be uh, really tough to create any kind of attack against this king. You got this bishop e5 ideas followed by a6 or even c6 as happened in the game. So queen e2 was played by Mamedianov attacking Carlitos, and now Levon Aron just protects it by playing bishop b5. And now he realizes that you know this rook was even better placed on b1. So that's why rook b1 was played by Mamedianov. And here, Levon Aronian played c6, protecting the bishop on b5, a really natural move. And here, rook fd1 was played. And Levon Aronian says, you know what? I got everything here. I got a nice position. I got a nice blockade on the king side. I got two extra pawns. So let's start pushing our a pawn, right? So that's why he goes for a5 in this position. And then, actually, Mamediaro has to create something. Otherwise, uh, he's going to be in real, real trouble in, in few moves. He goes for knight d4, which looks... Very natural, because after knight takes e2, let's say queen takes e2, it's going to be extremely tough to push this pawn without the knight on b3. And then you got this uh, rook a1, rook b1, queen f4, queen h6 ideas. And the position is more or less uh, equal, even though uh, black uh, black's uh, two, uh, two pawns up. But after knight takes, uh, uh, sorry, after knight d2, there is a brilliant move by Lebron and Orion, and he plays knight takes d4, boom, sacrificing a piece. C takes d4, and his idea is to take on d4 with the rook. Let's try to think a little bit about this position. The thing is, he's got four pawns for the sacrifice piece, which is uh, more than enough. But also, there's this idea, c3, attacking the queen, intending to go c2 in the next in the next move. Let's say, if you play knight f3, you can just play c3, and then attacking the queen, queen e3, rook d1, rook d1, and queen b2. This pawn is coming to c2, this rook is coming to d8, and then black's winning. So that's why after rook takes e4, Mamedero says, you know what, I'm gonna chase your queen. Rook a1, queen b2, 
Rook a b1 and he was dreaming so let's see if he goes back to a3 and we can make a draw but Levon Aronian sacrifices the whole queen with the move c3 this is a brilliant move by the Armenian player well what's uh, Levon Aronian idea or of course if you take on b2 then you just take on e2 and black's winning but uh, there is more if you move the queen to e3 for example which looks like a really natural uh, square you just go c2 and then you just win the game if rook takes b2 there is c takes in one queen and then uh, blacks uh, gets a lot of material and wins the game so that's why this queen has to stay in this diagonal e2 f3 g4 h5 to protect d1 so uh, c2 is not gonna work let's say for example queen f3 has happened in the game now c2 is just ridiculous because you take on b2 c takes it one there's just queen mm, to d1 but here Levon Arena sacrificed the queen with the move rook takes d2 brilliant move rook takes b2 c takes b2 and now you can't take the rook because there's b1 queen and if we count the pieces, black has a rook and four pawns for the sacrifice queen. But this pawn is also on the seventh rank, and this rook is joined the party on the default, and it's gonna be extremely tough for white to protect this position. Of course, Mami Diallo tries, these guys have like seven lives, right? They, they're like cats, you know, it's extremely tough to beat them. So Mami Diallo goes for bishop f1, and now rook h to d8 by Levon Aronian. Now forcing white to go rook b1 here in this position and then after taking on f1, king takes f1, we reach this position, a, a, another really important moment of, of the game. Because now Levon Aronian had a fantastic move, rook d8 to d3. Idea is that this queen has to protect d1. If you take on f6, there is rook d1 just winning on the spot. So this queen has to go, let's say, to h5 and then after a4, let's say, uh, King g2, because you cannot take on f7 again because of rook d1, a3, now queen f7, you just win the game with um, with rook d1, because if you take on, a on e6 after king b8, there are no more checks in two moves, and then if you go, let's say, queen f8, king c7, queen e7, there's rook d7, and black wins the game. So that's why after rook h uh, rook d8 to d3 black was almost winning but it's never easy you know to make the right moves in the board it's so easy to talk from from outside i always say this you know like it's so easy for us you know like chess commentators you know we we, we can think uh, twice we can go back and forth like try moves we can use the engines if, if we want you know so we have to talk with the deepest respect for every player right um but of course uh, here, maybe rook d8 to d3 was a better move, but so difficult, these kind of positions, you know. Uh, king takes f1, um, Lemon Arnian goes for rook c2, a really natural move, right? Intended to go rook c1, just winning again on the spot, and also bringing the other rook to the to the seventh rank. So rook c2, king g2, now uh, avoiding rook c1 because, of there, is, uh, because there is uh, rook takes b2. Rook d to d2. Queen f6 and a4. And again, I ask you, where is black threatening in this position? Let's say if you play queen f7 here, how do you win the game with the black pieces? Of course, there is rook f2, boom, queen takes f2, rook takes f2, king takes f2, and a3. And after a2, black just wins. So that's why after a4, now white plays king h3. So after rook f2, now, there's another important moment, and this is where Mame Diallo makes another mistake. Here, the best move was queen e7, threatening uh, different kinds of perpetuals, for example, queen e8, queen e7, the queen comes to b4, uh, in case of king b6. And here, for example, if b5, there is this brilliant move, queen a7, intending to give perpetual on a8, on a7, and also this idea with e5 to uh, lock the skin on the queen side, and then this was almost a draw but after rook f2 mame diallo decides to go for queen h8 king c7 and queen d4 and now levon aronian had another fantastic move in order to go to fight for an advantage here he went for the move f6 uh, trusting in facundo i know it's natural to 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 believe in facundo you know facundo uh, has solved all the chess problems in the history of the human being 
Like, there are only two cases where Facundo didn't solve the problem. This is the first one, this is the second one, and the first one uh, corresponds to the Paleolithical period. Paleo Paleolithical? Yeah, Paleolithical, right? And uh, we were nomads at that time, right? We, we were looking for food in different mm, locations and areas, you know? And uh, like chess players, right? Like chess players, we sometimes are people from the Paleolithical period. Um, looking for chess tournaments uh, everywhere in the world, like nerds, you know, where's this tournament with more money? I want to go there. There's a, a four-star hotel with a nice beach. I want to go to that tournament. <laughs> All right. And um, it's really important to have a table tennis in the hotels, right? For chess players. I think it's a sport we have more played in, in, in chess, right? We, normally with chess players, we love table tennis, at least in Spain, right? Um, all right, what am I talking about? I'm talking so, so much bullshit today. All right, so f6, and uh, the best move here was b5. Because now after queen a7, king d6, this king escapes. If you go queen b8, probably queen, king c5, and then uh, this king hides uh, with these pawns. And if you go queen d4, you can run via e7. So, uh, and after b5, if you go e5 in order to go queen a7 and queen a8 uh, perpetual, you go king b7, and now after queen d7, king b6, again, this king escapes. So that's why after queen d4, b5 was the best move, but Leonardian plays f6 with a really nasty idea of going h5 and checkmate. But this allows queen a4, and now if you go h5, this didn't happen in the game, then white would have gone queen a5. And now it's really important to play b6 here, otherwise you go king d6, there's rook d1, suddenly this rook comes to the action and then you can't protect the d2 square uh, with the rook, right? Since this queen is on a5, so that's why after uh, king c7, b6 was mandatory here in this position, queen a7, king d6, and this looks uh, like a draw according to the engines. This is just uh, incredibly difficult to play king e5 and then who knows what happened queen c7 0 0 0 according to the engines but really crazy so i understand level and here here and wanna go for this and then he took on h2 king g4 h5 king f4 and then he goes for the perpetual for the perpetual sorry because there's actually nothing more for black in this position so Lebanon played a fantastic game with a fantastic knight takes 4 with a fantastic queen sacrifice but chess is so difficult you know that uh, he didn't play uh, one good move at some point and then suddenly Mamediara was in the game and he managed to, to fight for the draw. So uh, it's been a pleasure to analyze the game for, for you guys and hope to see you in the next video uh, from today's game that you guys know it starts at 4.30 uh, Central European time. And uh, yes, be good and don't drive if you drink. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.